One of the first and hardest decisions you'll make in Last Epoch will be in regards to the mastery class you want to pick. You choose this when you're at the end of time. The reason it is a difficult choice is once you actually do it, that's it locked in. You can't respec or change your mastery class at all. There are 15 different mastery classes in the game as of patch 1.0 and what we will do in this video is we'll run over all 15 of them. I'll talk about their pros and cons, their general playstyle and we'll run over the skills they've got available as well. So hopefully it will really help help you out in picking the mastery class that will suit your particular playstyle. Now before we go in and we start breaking it down just very quickly I'm really happy to say that I'm officially partnered with Last Epoch and also the Nexus store which means that if you're looking to buy the game or any of the supporters packs or the upgrade packs if you do it through the Nexus store and the link you can see on screen then you actually help out the channel by doing that so feel free to check that out if you are looking to make a purchase. But let's dive in now, the first class that we'll look at will be the Acolyte. The three mastery classes for the Acolyte are Necromancer, Lich and Warlock. Your Necromancer is your typical minion class, your Lich revolves around low life builds to boost your damage and Warlock is for damage over time focus builds and it makes use of a unique mechanic called Curses. The base Acolyte class has uh, access to a good mix of minion, direct damage and also dot builds. Now starting off the first mastery we'll look at will be the Necromancer. The Necromancer class is for players who want to summon a horde of undead minions. When you spec into this, you'll gain summon Wraith. Alongside this skill, you also gain plus one max skeletons, plus one max skeleton mage, and 50% increased minion damage. Now, alongside the core skills you get in this mastery, there are some base acolyte skills that work really nice to support this. They are summon skeletons, summon bone golem, and also summon volatile zombie. Specifically, however, for the Necromancer, Skill wise we have Summon Wraith that allows you to summon a temporary minion, can do a ton of damage, you can also choose to have fire or poison variants of these and this is a mastery skill meaning you unlock this straight away. The next skill we have here is Summon Skeletal Mage, with this one you can summon up to 5 of these, they can be specced into fire, necrotic or cold damage, you can also choose to summon an Archmage rather than several weaker mages. The next skill is Sacrifice, this is essentially Corpse Explosion from Diablo 4, so you'll sacrifice your minions to do a huge explosion. We have Dreadshade next, this allows you to massively increase the damage of your minions, but at the cost of either their health or their defense. And then lastly we have Assemble Abomination, this is for players that want a single minion that can tank like a beast and one shot enemies and this skill in particular is a personal favourite of mine, it's just so much fun to see this roaming around the screen just destroying absolutely everything. So this class is perfect for players that want to sit back and let their minions do all the work, although there are some options if you want to be a bit more hands on with your minions as well. For the next mastery here we have the Lich mastery now, this one is all about sacrificing your health to do additional damage. When you spec into this you'll gain 1% of damage dealt as health leech, also your spells and melee attacks will deal additional increased damage equal to your missing health. As we mentioned earlier on this build is all about high risk and high rewards. So your mastery for this is the reaper form, in this form you deal a ton more damage but your health constantly decays so it makes it for a very hectic playstyle and almost exact opposite of the necromancer mastery that we looked at earlier on in the video. One of the great elements of the reaper form skill is that when your health runs out when you're in this form you won't die but you will instead return to your normal form so it's essentially giving you an extra life when you're in this particular form. The next skill we have here is Drain Life, this is a channeled skill, it can target multiple enemies and it will deal necrotic damage as well as leeching back 30% of the damage that you deal so it can be great for getting your health back up again. We have Aura of Decay next, this is a toggle AoE ability, deals a huge amount of poison damage to the enemies but it also deals poison damage to yourself so once again this is leaning into the risk reward playstyle. The final skill we look at for the Lich is Death Seal, so this removes all your ward, it seals your health giving you increased damage in return for the health that you're missing and this particular skill alongside the Reaper form can make for some pretty amazing results. So that is the Lich class, once again high risk and high reward, without a doubt one of the more complex masteries and not personally one I would recommend for new players or players looking for a mastery that's got more simple build options available. 
The Warlock Mastery was added with patch 1.0. From the time that I've spent with it, I would say it's probably the most complex class in the game, but it has incredible potential for a ton of really powerful builds. The Warlock is all about applying damage over time, with their unique mechanic being five different curses you can apply to enemies, and you'll gain various different bonuses depending on how many of these five you can apply at a time. The Mastery bonus for the Warlock is 5% more damage per curse on the target, and 35% increased fire and necrotic resistance. The first skill we have for the Warlock is Cutonic Fissure. With this you essentially rip open a hole to hell that will deal damage over time as well as release spirits that will attack nearby enemies and you'll do fire and necrotic damage with this. When you spec into it you can have it so that volatile zombies, which is an acolyte skill, they will spawn from the fissure so they're essentially jumping out from hell which is pretty amazing. You can also have it so it'll cast Chaos Bolts which is another Warlock Mastery skill. Overall an awesome skill and visually one of the best looking ones in the game. Our next skill and one we mentioned just a moment ago is Chaos Bolt, so this can be used as a main spender for the Warlock. With this you'll fire out a ton of AoE projectiles that do fire and necrotic damage. It's great for doing just base damage but it's also really nice for applying dots and you can convert it to cold or physical damage so that you can actually apply frostbite or bleed instead as well. There's also support in here for buffing your minions so you may find this skill could be useful for necromancers as well. We then have Ghost Flame, this is a channeled ability that deals fire and necrotic damage. Generally, channeled abilities can be pretty weak in action RPGs, but this is really awesome. You can spec into it so that you can actually channel whilst moving at the same time, so it gets rid of the age old problem of the fact you're a sitting duck while you're channeling ability. And there's also a few options for buffing the channeling playstyle within the Warlock kit, so I reckon in time we will see some pretty crazy builds with this. Soul Feast is our next skill. This was previously a lit skill, but it moved to the Warlock with patch 1.0. When you use this on cursed enemies, you'll deal damage to them and gain ward in return. So this skill can take a bit of setup, but with a large group of enemies all with curses on them, you can get some pretty awesome results. Our final Warlock ability is Prevain Fail. This is essentially a channeled movement skill that allows you to dodge hit based attacks whilst you're channeling it. You do have various options for using this to apply curses or dots, but personally I use this as a no shit button to get me out of danger if I've messed up at all. The Warlock, like other recent masteries added to the game, looks like it has the potential to be really strong. If you're someone who loves to really get into the nitty gritty with builds and have a good understanding how skills can synergize together and how dots work, then I reckon you will love this class. If, however, you're a new player to the action RPD genre, I'm not 100% sure I could recommend the Warlock as it may feel a little bit overwhelming. The three masteries for the mage class are Sorcerer, Spellblade and Rune Master. The Sorcerer is your typical caster class, it's got a mix of different elemental ranged attacks, ones with cooldown and ones you can spam. You have the Spellblade, this is your close combat mage, it mainly makes use of fire and ice and there's a ton of ward regen to provide you with survivability. And then we have the Rune Master, this was added to the game in patch 0.9.2. It makes use of a unique mechanic called Runic Invocation, this class is in insanely good and while it doesn't mean much to me many people can play this class to the invoker and the defense of the ancients and when they say this they're most definitely being complimentary now the base mage class has a wide range of elemental skills and a decent amount of utility base skills to use as well the first mastery that we'll look at here will be the sorcerer the Sorcerer then, as mentioned, is your typical caster style class. Now this was one of my favourite classes in the game, but the recently introduced Rune Master does just about everything the Sorcerer does but better. The mastery bonus for this class is an additional 50 mana, and spells deal increased damage equal to their mana cost, so you want to cast spells that do more mana to do more damage. The mastery skill is Meteor. Now this is a spammable skill, does a huge amount of damage, but it's a high mana cost to balance it out, so you can't spam it too much. Much. You can specialise into this to make it throw out shrapnel on impact and even have up to 6 meteors fall at a time. The next skill we have here is Static Orb. This is a ball of lightning attack. There's quite a lot of options available for mixing it up with this. You can have the orbs orbit you, you can make them do cold damage, you can even cast a lot of smaller orbs on top of the main one. So overall it is a fun skill to play around with. 
The next skill, this is Ice Barrage. With this, you open a rift that shoots out ice goes for five seconds. You can change it to a cone style attack. You can make it pierce, or you can go all in increasing the attack speed and make it shoot out ice goes at an absolutely incredible rate. You can also use other skills while you are casting this as well because it's got that five second with the portal shooting out ice goes. We have Arcane Ascendance next. This is a toggle ability can be used to massively increase the damage that you do but the expense of the fact that it makes you a sitting duck is while you're actually channeling this you can't move at all so you're going to put out a lot more damage but you're potentially going to take a lot more damage while you are casting it. Finally we have Black Hole, this is a great ability, it can be used for both crowd control and damage and there's also a node for it that allows it to cast meteors so when you pull the enemy in you can then smash them with meteors at the same time as well. So overall the Sorcerer is a fun class and can be great for anyone looking for a typical caster style playthrough but again as mentioned earlier once you play the Rune Master Mastery there really is no looking back and on the subject of that mastery let's have a look at it now. The Rune Master Mastery then was added with patch 0.9.2, at the time in this video the Mastery is exceptionally strong and it's potentially the strongest one in the game. The Mastery is essentially a sorcerer but in steroids, it has a unique mechanic called Runic Invocation that really adds to what the Mastery can do and it makes it a ton of fun to play. The passive bonus for choosing this Mastery is 30% increased elemental damage, 10% increased cast speed with elemental spells and access to the Runic Invocation skill. With this particular skill, whenever you cast an elemental skill, you gain a rune of that particular element. When you cast runic invocation, you then cast an invocation based on the runes consumed. You can have up to three runes at a time, meaning the class can cast 40 different invocations. From a gameplay perspective, this is possibly one of the most interesting and most fun skills in the game. The next skill we have is Flame Rush. This is our traversal skill whereby the longer you channel it, the further you actually travel. Now you can also use this to proc the Runic Invocation skill, which means you don't need Runic Invocation on your bar. You can just have Flame Rush there instead. With this, it will activate your runes and activate the invocation. You can also change it so that rather than doing flame damage, it can be a lightning or cold ability. And then that in turn will generate different runes for different invocations. It really is pretty awesome. The next skill, this is Frost Wall. With this one, it does what it says in the tin, really. It creates a, a wall of frost that damages enemies. You can also get various different effects depending on whether or not an enemy walks through the wall or you actually walk through it as well. So there's a lot going on with this skill. For skill number four, we have Rune Bolt. This can be used as your main spender. The standard version of this rotates through the different elements. So it's fire, ice, and lightning when you use it but you can spec into it and have it use just one particular element. You can even have it shoot multiple bolts at the same time, or you can have it auto-target enemies as well. So once again, there's a lot going on with this particular skill. The final skill is Glyph of Dominion. This is essentially a trap skill you place in the ground. It does lightning damage as default, but you can spec into it and change the element it does. As well as that, you can also change it to a support skill, so it can actually offer you and your allies ward, cleanse, haste, and a lot more on top of that as well. The Rune Master then is a fantastic pick for anyone looking for a caster build that's got a ton of different build options available and it even has some support options available for anyone looking to play multiplayer and buff their teammates as well. So if you genuinely have no preference towards a particular mastery that you would like to choose then I would say this is a great one to pick. Even if you have a preference towards particular masteries, this is still a great one to pick. The final mastery for the mage is the spell blade. So this is your battle mage mastery for players who want to use spells to punch enemies in the face and be able to take a ton of damage themselves. The passive bonus for this, you gain four ward on melee hit and mana spent on melee attacks is converted to ward. The first skill you unlock when you choose this mastery is Shatter Strike. This is a cold melee skill that instantly kills frozen enemies below a certain health threshold. So the idea is freeze enemies and then essentially smash them with this. This skill can also be used to generate a ton of ward. We then have Flame Reef. This is our melee attack. It releases a wave of flames. Really fun skill this one is through other skills in the spell blade tree you can massively buff the damage in this and you can have it fire off in a huge AOE around yourself essentially nuking half of the screen. 
The next skill we have is Enchant Weapon. This one provides us with extra additional elemental damage for our melee attacks. It has a passive and an active portion and you can even have it so that it auto casts this skill when the skill comes off cooldown, which is pretty nice. Firebrand is our spammable melee fire skill. This builds up stacks and the more you use it and the more stacks you have it will provide us with extra damage, extra range and even extra attack speed. This skill can be used to build up the damage on flame reeve so a popular setup is to spam this skill and then use flame reeve to nuke anything that is left standing. Surge is our movement ability for the Spellblade class. This particular one it does lightning damage but you can also have it do fire or ice damage. You can also spec into it to give you wards so when you move out of the way of an enemy you'll be gaining some defence at the same time. Overall, while Spellblade is one or two completely busted builds, personally I find the mastery a little bit underwhelming. However, if you are someone that's looking for a melee spell class then this will be perfect for you. The three mastery classes available for the Primalist are Beastmaster, Druid and Shaman. The base skills for the Primalist are a mix of damage, minion and companion skills with one or two buff style skills as well. The Beastmaster Mastery is a pet build with access to a wide variety of minions. The Druid allows you to transform into three very different unique forms as well as summon minions. And the Shaman is all about the elements which have been able to cast tornadoes, earthquakes, avalanches as well. There's also strong support for totem builds within the Shaman Mastery. The first Mastery that we will actually break down, this will be the Beastmaster. The Beastmaster Mastery then is all about using a variety of different minions to do the hard work for you. Your minions in this Mastery also have a companion tag and this is unique to the Beastmaster Mastery and there's various buffs that will only apply to companions. Now this isn't specifically related to the Beastmaster Mastery however a very popular build for a Beastmaster is one that uses Summon Wolves which is a primalist base skill and you equip a late game unique and that will turn the wolves into squirrels which is absolutely amazing. When you choose to spec into this particular mastery you'll gain plus one companion summon limit and your minions will deal an additional 50% increased damage. You'll actually deal an additional 50% increased damage as well. The mastery skill and the first one you unlock for this class is Summon Raptor. So all companions still pets, they can actually use another skill once they're summoned. What you'll do is you'll use the skill that was used to summon them and that will enable an active skill. For the Raptor you have something known as Rampage, it gives it an additional 40% increased damage, attack speed, movement and even size. So you'll see it grow larger before it starts just smashing everyone, which is a lot of fun. You can also use this companion to lower the cooldown of your other companion skills and it's got a really fun modifier where when it gains 10 kills in a zone it will evolve and get bigger doing more damage. Our next skill is Summon Bear. Personally I feel this is the weakest of the companions but I'm sure there will be someone in the comments below that will come up with a busted build for a bit. I'm not a huge fan of it myself. The active skill for this is Bear Roar so with this it taunts enemies and it heals health per enemy taunted. You can spec into this to have it to use the swipe base skill and it'll be based on your own swipe setup which is pretty nice but it does have a pretty long cooldown. Also with the bear you can summon a claw totem that casts swipe when it kills an enemy. Our next companion skill here is Summon Scorpion. The active skill for this is Venom Nova and it will apply stacks of poison to your enemy. You can get some pretty crazy poison setups with this particular companion and it even has a, a modifier where it will summon baby scorpions and then they can apply additional stacks of poison as well. Our next skill is Summon Frenzy Totem. This one is classed as a minion rather than a companion and this is used to buff both yourself and your companions. It can be converted to a sloth totem so rather than casting haste which it normally does on yourself and your companions it will instead slow the enemy down by casting slow on them and it will shred their armour as well. So there's a few different options you can go for with this. There are various different companion specific buffs for each of the different companions that can apply to this as well. So again a skill with there's quite a lot going on with it. The final Beastmaster skill, this is Summon Sabretooth. This companion can put out insane amounts of damage and I've actually seen some build setups where you have people with just the Sabretooth out and it's actually soloing the bosses, so it can really can be pretty amazing. There's an awesome node within the Swipe Tree, which is a primary skill for the 
Prime list that actually makes it so that the buffs from Swipe will apply to your Sabretooth and that really ups the damage on it as well. So while some of the companions are best with a number of them out and summon, the Sabretooth is one where even on its own it can absolutely smash the enemies. Overall then, I really enjoy the Beastmaster class, it's a great alternative for anyone looking for a pet build but perhaps doesn't want to run zombies or skeletons. The summon wolf build that enables we talked about earlier on is great for new players, it's a nice simple build to run and once you get the helm of the scurry unique at a later game then you can convert and run your build straight into a summon squirrel build which is one of the most fun and one of the most unique builds in the game. The Druid Mastery offers a mix of different animals you can transform into, pets you can summon and also nature based skills that you can cast. It's a very versatile mastery and it's one of my favourites in the game. When you initially pick this you will gain 70% damage reduction for 2 seconds after transforming and also 20% increased health and mana. The mastery skill for this class is awesome werebear form, so when you're in this you'll gain access to a whole new set of skills that can be affected by the base skills that you specialise into and that applies to the other transformation skills within this tree, so there's a ton of skills that are available via this. With the werebear specifically, you can have it casting lightning when it runs, you can have it creating earthquakes when it jumps and it can even cast one of the other mastery skills within this tree and tangling roots when it jumps as well and that's a really powerful build that particular one. This is probably my favourite transformation out of the three but overall they are all great. The next transformation skill we have here is Spriggan form and this is another great one as well. So in this form your main attack will be Spirit Forms which is a ranged spell attack. You can choose to have your skills to physical or cold damage and the actual appearance of your Spriggan will change based on that as well. A lot of awesome build options available with this. One of the strongest ones is a Totem build which is primarily a Shaman based build but the Spriggan form can make really nice use of this. The next skill is Summon Spriggan, this particular one it does what it says in the tin, it allows you to summon a Spriggan companion. This can be used to kill enemies but its strength really lies in the awesome buffs it can offer. It has an aura around it and any allies within the aura can gain this buff so it can restore health, it can provide you with a whopping 8% flat base crit chance which is a huge amount, 72% critical strike avoidance and also spell damage as well so as a, a buff bot of sorts. It's really pretty awesome. Our final transformation skill here, this is Swarm Blade form. This is another great one that offers some pretty amazing build options. With this you'll be zipping all over the screen, casting tornadoes and you can even summon hives that when you hit them you'll summon locust minions to help you out as well, so really fun. The final mastery skill we have here is Entangling Roots. The base version of this, it fires off in a cone area and it will root the enemy to the ground for 1.5 seconds. You can upgrade it so it expands in a circle around you and you can even have it so when your werebear slams the ground it will cast this as well in a circle around it. Overall it is a ton of fun. The Druid then is one of my favourite mastery classes in the game, offers a ton of different playstyles which you've been able to get up close and personal as the werebear, you can sip about the screen as the swarm blade or you can summon a ton of totems as the spriggan. Overall highly versatile class and as such highly recommended as well. Our final mastery for the Prime List is the Shaman and this mastery received a rework with patch 1.0 putting it in a much better spot than it was in previously. Whilst not Shaman specific, with patch 1.0 the Prime List got a new skill called Garrowin Storm and also reworked a base skill called Tempest Strike and these really open up some build options for the Shaman mastery. The mastery makes use of natural disaster style skills and there's also a strong emphasis on totem builds as well. When you select this mastery you gain a reduced 5 totem mana cost, 10 attunement and 50 elemental resistance when you control a totem. The mastery skill that you unlock first here is Summon Storm Totem, so this particular one you'll summon a, a totem that casts lightning at nearby enemies, you can also have this cast blizzard around the totem and this will chill enemies and deal cold damage to them as well. On top of that you can have it so that when you cast this there is a chance, uh, it's a 25% chance for it to summon a super buffed version of the totem and that will do an additional 100% damage and it has an additional 100% crit chance as well. 
next skill is Tornado. With this, you can summon multiple tornadoes. They'll move about at random and pull nearby enemies into them. And you can specialise into these and have them cast lightning or even convert them into fire tornadoes as well. We then have Earthquake, which is another pretty self-explanatory skill. With this one, you'll slam the ground, damaging enemies and creating aftershocks that will then deal additional damage. Like Tornadoes, you can also convert the damage in this into fire, or you can even have it cast a lightning storm at the same time as well. Our final mastery skill is Avalanche. This is a channeled skill where you call down ice from the sky. Now, you can increase the area and the speed of the projectiles by specking into this, and you can even have it so it follows you around as you run around the levels, and this personally is my favourite setup for this particular skill. As mentioned earlier, this class received a rework with patch 1.0, and whilst not a complete overhaul, the new base skills and their interactions with the Shaman specific skills really do open up the class a lot more, and if you're looking for a class that is all about calling down the elements to smash your enemies, then you should love this. The three mastery classes available for the rogue are Blade Dancer, Marksman and Falconer. The Blade Dancer is your standard melee rogue class that will primarily use daggers. Marksman is your bow class and Falconer summons a falcon and this has various options for buffing the damage of your minions. Within the base rogue tree you have a selection of melee, range, utility and also minion skills. The first mastery that we'll have a look at here will be the Blade Dancer. The Blade Dancer Mastery is your standard melee rogue setup with it making use of daggers, dodge and also high mobility. It does have a unique mechanic where certain skills will generate shadows and then you can cast an eligible skill and your shadows will repeat the skill that you have just cast. When you choose this particular mastery you'll gain plus 1 to your max shadows, you'll gain 15 melee physical damage and you can also get 15% more dodge rating. The first skill we have here for the Blade Dancer is Dance and Blades. So this one is a channeled movement based skill. It requires you to be dual wielding, so that it can be daggers or swords or a mixture of both. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it can be used to proc other skills and it's great for building up a unique Blade Dancer ability called Shadow Daggers. Once you've got a set number of Shadow Dagger stacks, it will do massive damage on your enemy. Moving around the levels using this looks awesome as well, as you can see from this gameplay here. Our next mastery skill here is Shadow Cascade. This is an AoE attack that is copied by your Shadow Clones. You can get some pretty fun builds with this one, one of the best ones being where the skill is cast when you use your Shift ability, which is your Rogue's base movement skill. So you're basically shifting all over the screen, creating shadows and casting this skill at the same time. And it is a ton of fun, this particular setup. Synchronized Strikes is our next mastery skill. This can be used to do damage, but it will also generate two shadows at the same time as well. So you'll find many setups that use this will then follow up this particular skill with a skill that will then make use of the shadows and copy that based on your number of active shadows. Finally, we have Lethal Mirage. With this skill, you become immune and rapidly strike nearby targets. This is a great skill and you can also use it to create shadow clones as well as have each of your hits cast Shadow Cascade at the same time as well. That was a skill we looked at just a moment ago. It also has a huge 18% kill threshold on it, meaning if you use it on an enemy, even a boss, this could be a pinnacle boss, if they have less than 18% health, then you will kill them instantly. Overall, the Blade Master is a really fun class and it nails that feeling of zipping all over the screen and darting in and out of the shadows. If you're looking for a fast paced melee character, then you really can't go wrong with this mastery. Our next mastery class here is the Marksman and this is your typical archery based class. When you choose this mastery, you gain 5% increased attack speed when you use a bow attack. And this will stack up to 5 times, so that's an additional 25% increased attack speed and also 50% increased damage while using a bow. The first mastery skill you unlock, this is Detonating Arrow. This fires an arrow that embeds itself in the enemy and then explodes after a short delay. You can specialise into this and there's quite a lot of different damage types. You can have it do poison, fire, ice and even lightning damage. Lightning damage is one of the most popular marksman setups you can actually run. It uses a unique called the Age of Winter and it makes a build called the Spell Mage. The next mastery skill here is Multi Shot. This allows you to fire out a wave of arrows. Normally, each cast of this can only hit a target once, but you can specialise into it so that each arrow will do a separate damage packet, meaning it can do a ton of damage on larger enemies. 
Dark Quiver is our next skill. This is a very unique one. With this, you summon arrows that rain in from the sky. When you pick up one of these, you gain 100% increased damage on your next bow attack. Specializing in this allows it to offer different buffs for your various different range skills, and some of these can be really pretty powerful. Our final mastery skill, this is Hail of Arrows, a classic archery skill. You can choose to have multiple instances of this. You can change it to a channeled skill. You can even have it being a dot applicator for bleed or poison setups. As much as I enjoy going ranged bow characters in games, the marksman isn't in the greatest of spots at the moment and it does suffer from a lack of build variety, so I can't currently give this mastery a strong recommendation as much as I would love to. Our final mastery for the rogue is the falconer. This is your classic trapper style setup and it makes use of nets, traps and of course the awesome falcon that will fight alongside you. The class is a very unique playstyle and like the other recently added classes to the game you can really feel a difference with how much 11th hour games have improved their class design over the years. The mastery bonus for this class is 12 dexterity and your falcon gains plus 1 flat melee damage per dexterity. Our first mastery skill unlock is Falconry. This summons a falcon pet for us. One awesome aspect to this pet is that it can't take damage. So if you're looking to roll a minion build and go all in on the falcon, you don't have to worry about stacking minion health at all, which can really help out with itemization. It also has a few nodes where it can inherit your general damage stats, which will really boost up its damage. And then on top of that, you've got an element of control over it. You can set it so it'll stick close to you or it'll target far away enemies. It also has an act of portion of the skill so once it's been summoned if you reactivate the skill then it does an attack that will attack a group of targets it adds a debuff to them and with that debuff the next hit that the enemy takes they'll take a huge 150 percent more damage bonus so they will take a massive amount of damage overall a fantastic skill and i really love what they have done with this the next skill we have is Explosive Trap. By default, you can throw down up to six of these at a time and they'll stay armed for up to 30 seconds or until an enemy is foolish enough to walk into them and they'll then explode. There's a ton of options for customizing these. You can convert them to lightning or cold damage. You can even throw up to 12 of them at once and you can have it so that when you hit an enemy with a melee attack, you attach a mine to them as well. Our next skill here is the net. With this, you leap backwards, you throw a net that deals physical damage, it slows bosses and immobilizes regular enemies, and you can spam this ability as well. Now, you can convert the net to different damage types. You can have it work more like a trap, and then it has to be walked over for it to actually activate, and you can have it so that enemies take more damage from attacks when they are immobilized. Overall, a great crowd control skill. Our next skill, Aerial Assault, is a hybrid movement, damage and buff type skill, so it has a ton of utility within it. There are various options for customising this and it really can help complement other skills within your kit and a particular playstyle that you may be aiming for. The final skill we have here is Dive Bomb. This is an AoE attack on a short cooldown and it hits like a truck or a really angry falcon. <laughs> there are numerous options for this where you can increase the cooldown in exchange for having it do even more damage as well as some fun interactions where you can use dive bomb and other elements of the rogues kit such as you can have it interacting with decoys or even your smoke bombs. Whilst the falconer class is still very new and we're all figuring out what it can do, I've had a ton of fun with this class so far and if anyone looking for a pet build they don't have to worry about the pet getting downed or for a trapper build then the falconer is the one to go for. The final class we'll look at will be the Sentinel. The three masteries for this class are Paladin, Forge Guard, and Void Knight. Now, normally I don't talk too much about base skills, but the Sentinel has some amazing base skills. You've got Warpath, which allows you to do spin to win builds. You've got Rebuke, which is one of the best defensive skills in the game. And you've got Smite, which is an amazing spell as well. The mastery bonuses really are just a cherry on the cake for what is already an awesome base class. For the Masteries, you've got the Paladin Enemy. This is the closest we have to a support class in the game and it offers a ton of options for buffing your allies. Despite this, it can put out a ton of damage as well. The Forge Guard is all about using shields to both protect yourself and do damage to enemies alongside being able to summon living weapons to do damage to the enemies as well. And then finally, we have the Void Knight. This makes use of a wide range of both melee and spell void attacks to destroy your enemies. Now, the first mastery we'll look at here, this will be the Paladin. 
The Paladin is a class that prior to patch 1.0 only had 4 mastery skills with one of them not even having a skill tree. Despite this, it was and still is a really fun strong class and with patch 1.0 it's only got better. When you spec into this you'll deal increased fire, lightning and physical damage based on your percentage of health remaining and you get 1% increased healing effectiveness per point of attunement. The first skill we look at here is Healing Hands. By default this heals allies in a target area and adds a heal over time for 3 seconds as well. You can specialise into this to have it to apply ward and even become a channeled heal that will also apply a fire damage to enemies it hits. You can have it so that it will activate when you hit an enemy with a melee attack so you get a constant source of healing as well. For what should be a pretty simple healing skill, they really have went to town with this one. Our next skill here is Holy Aura. This is both an active and a passive effect. So passively, the base version will increase you and your allies' elemental resistance by 15% and your damage by 30% and when you activate it, it will double these bonuses for 4 seconds. Specialising into this, you can get a ton of other defensive and offensive buffs. Overall, it's an amazing support skill. The next mastery skill is Sigils of Hope, this is in our support skill, so when you use this, you summon Sigils around you that can boost both you and your allies defence and damage, with each Sigil increasing the bonus. You can also have it so that there is a chance you'll summon one of these when you kill an enemy if you specialise into it. Once again, another great support skill. The final mastery skill we have here is Judgment. This is an AoE melee attack that leaves a dot on the ground and enemies within that area will be damaged and allies within it will actually be healed. You can specialise into this and change it so that it becomes an aura that follows you around. And lastly there's a pair of unique gloves you can get in the game that if you equip the gloves and don't have a weapon or a shield equipped, they massively increase the damage that the Judgment skill can do. So I've seen some people running around with no weapon equipped and in 3 punches or so they've managed to take down a boss, which is just absolutely awesome. Prior to 1.0, the Paladin was a great mastery that could put out a ton of damage and also offer some real nice support options for group play. With the changes in 1.0, with the introduction of the skill tree for healing hands, then the mastery has got even better, so one that I really do highly recommend. Our second sentinel mastery is the Forge Guard. This class is all about hard hitting attacks that either need charged up or have a longer cooldown on them. With this class as well you can summon weapons and living armour to fight alongside you. When you spec into this you gain 35% increased physical and fire resistance and 3% increased armour for each hit that you have taken in the last 5 seconds so this class can absorb an absolute ton of damage. The first mastery skill you get here is Forge Strike. This is a melee attack where you call on a huge hammer from the sky. This can do a lot of damage but you'll primarily use this to summon and buff your forged weapons which is a unique minion type specific to the forge guard. You can also convert this from a hammer to a spear to a sword or even an anvil for various different damage effects. Shield Throw is our next skill, this is a pretty self explanatory one, specking into this you can increase the number of times it bounces and there's also a build where you can throw off your manifest armour minion to make it do a swipe attack. I've never personally tried this build but I have heard that it is very good. On the subject of manifest armour, this is the next skill we look at here, so when you summon this it's a set of armour that will fight alongside you, it's a really unique mechanic in that if you specialise into this you can choose to have certain armour pieces that you're wearing and the stats on them actually apply to your manifest armour as well and starting out it will just be a suit of armour but depending on how you spec into it you can add a weapon or even a shield to it as well. Our next skill here is Ring of Shields, with this you'll summon a set of shields that revolve around you and they'll block projectiles. The stats of any equipped shield that your character is wearing will also apply to the shields that are summoned by this skill as well. Our final mastery skill is Smelter's Wrath, this is a channeled skill that does more damage the longer you charge it up. The standard version of this it hits in a cone area but you can spec into it to make it to hit in a large AOE around you and the longer you charge it once again the more damage you can do so this can be a real screen clearer. The Forge Guard Mastery, out of the three different masteries available for the Sentinel class, it is the weakest one and I do feel that in end game and leveling it can be a bit of a chore at times. It's not the worst of masteries but it is one I would have trouble recommending. 
The final mastery we will look at will be the Void Knight. This mastery is all about void damage with you applying it either via spells or melee attacks. It also has a unique mechanic where skills can cast themselves again. This is known as Echoes. One of the most powerful lazy builds in the game, the Void Knight Auto Bomber, is also available with this particular mastery. Bonus wise for choosing this the mastery, you get 75% increased melee void damage and your melee attacks, thrown attacks and void spells have a chance to be repeated by an echo half a second later. The first mastery skill you unlock for the class is a raisin strike. This can be an exceptionally hard hitting melee attack, it does however have a 5 second cooldown but any enemies killed by this by default are replaced by void drifts and these do void damage to any enemies they hit. You can also spec into this and have it so that it summons void beams when you kill enemies with it as well. So overall a really great skill this one. Volatile Reversal is our next skill. When you activate this you return to position you were 2 seconds ago and your health and mana go back to the values they were at that time. There's a pretty high skill ceiling on this. If you use it at the wrong time it will cause you more problems than it will actually solve but once you get used to it, it is an amazing ability. Our next mastery skill is Abyssal Echoes. This is a void dot that will spread amongst enemies. If you hit them, the damage that the dot would normally do over the 6 seconds is applied immediately. You can specialise into this to have it increase the area of the echoes as well as how many enemies it will spread to and you can have this spreading all over the screen. Devouring Orb is mastery skill number 4 and this is a skill that enables the insanely powerful and lazy auto bomber build. This skill creates a devouring orb at the target location and it casts a void drift whenever an enemy dies. Specialising into this enables the orbs to orbit you and this in turn enables the auto bomber build. The final mastery skill is Anomaly. This can be used to make enemies disappear but the variant that most people use for this is where you have a time bubble that will surround you and it will actually follow you and it offers you a ton of different buffs as well. Overall the Void Knight Mastery is one of my favourite masteries in the game with probably the Echo Warpath Void Knight being one of my favourite builds in the game. I highly recommend this mastery. So that is a quick look at the 15 different mastery classes that are available in Last Epoch. Hopefully this video has helped you make the decision in regards to which mastery you will actually be going for. If you've got the time I would say check them all out because in their own ways all of them really are a lot of fun. Now if this video has been helpful please do take the time to hit a like, share and subscribe button. It took an absolute age to do from getting all the footage to working out the script for it from playing around with all the masteries just to refresh myself on them as well so yes if you did enjoy this and you found it useful please do take the time to hit that like button and leave a comment below as well but thanks for tuning in for this stay safe i'll see you all again soon